Hi, this is Leah from Open Intro. In this video, we will see how to find the mean and standard deviation of a binomial distribution, and how to use normal approximation for a binomial distribution. We learned in a previous exercise that about 70% of 18 to 20 year olds consumed alcoholic beverages in 2008. We now consider a random sample of 50 18 to 20 year olds. A. How many people would you expect to have consumed alcoholic beverages? And with what standard deviation? Here, to find the mean and standard deviation, we're going to want to know what type of distribution this is, because we don't have all the raw data to be able to calculate these quantities from scratch. We see that it says how many, and so this makes us think binomial. How many out of n? And so we have an n of 50, because we're selecting 50 uh, people, and we have a p, uh, we have the given population percent as 70%. So we have a p of 0.7. And because it's a random sample, we can consider the draws to be independent. And so because of these things, uh, we can say that it is a binomial distribution. And so we can use the shortcut formulas for the mean and the standard deviation of a binomial distribution that are given here, the mu and sigma. And so mu, the mean or expected value, is just np. So we can just do 50 times 0.7 and get a mean of 35. And for sigma, we'll do square root of np1 minus p. And we plug those numbers in and we get 3.24. Again, using these shortcut formulas is really convenient because otherwise, especially standard deviation to find it from scratch is very tedious. B, would you be surprised if there were 45 or more people who have consumed alcoholic beverages? Looking back at our mean and standard deviation, uh, standard deviation of three, so we expect on average to be around three away from 35. So if we had say 38 yeses in our sample, uh, we wouldn't be that surprised. That's about the average deviation that we'd expect. But with 45 or more, that's about three standard deviations, which is a lot above the mean. So yes, we would be surprised because 45 is about three standard deviations above the mean of 35. C, what is the probability that 45 or more people in the sample have consumed alcoholic beverages? How does this probability relate to your answer in part B? So we want the probability that we get 45 or more, and because this is a binomial distribution, we could use the binomial formula. We'd have to use the binomial formula for 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. So we'd be applying the binomial formula six times and adding up those probabilities. We could definitely do that, but let's see if normal approximation will be appropriate in this case, because in general, that's a lot faster to do it that way. So let's check that this binomial distribution is approximately normal. We're gonna need NP and N1 minus P to be at least 10. We have NP is 50 times 0.7, that is greater than or equal to 10, and n1 minus p is also greater than or equal to 10. So we can use normal approximation here. So we'll need a z-score, that's going to be our x of interest, minus the calculated av and divided by the sd. So that's going to be the 45 minus the average of 35 divided by the sd of 3.24. That gives us 3.09. And because we want 45 or more, we'll be uh, looking for the area to the right of that z-score under the normal curve. So you can use whichever technology you like. Here I'll use a TI. So I'm going to go to second VARS distribution and choose number two, which is norm CDF. Our lower bound is 3.09. And our upper bound is some big number, so we can just choose 6, it's a very large z-score, and hit enter and enter again, and we get 0 0.001. So the probability that 45 or more people in the sample have consumed alcoholic beverages is approximately 0 0.001. And this is consistent with Part B. We said it would be surprising. Um, and this is a very low probability that this would occur, so it would be unlikely or surprising. That's it for this video. For more free resources, check us out at openintro.org.